as you walk through the valley of the shadow of hell, you will realize that there is something ahead. Something that lurks behind the dark veil. A veil that is beyond our own comprehension. What's up, guys, and welcome back to Beyond, Beyond the Void Horror Podcast. That's right. We're back for episode 154, and this week we're going to be doing something very special. And for those new folks out here, you're going to you're gonna want to buckle the fuck up right? and make sure you put on your headphones, get your whitey tighties out, and hide <laughs> under the covers, because we're going to be doing our segment that we've been doing for a long while now that is our own. It's called Grave Plots. And Grave Plots is where we essentially make up a movie on the spot by pulling out names out of a crystal skull with diamond eyes, <laughs> fake horror movie titles from you guys who are listening, and our own, and some of the guests that have been on this show who've done it with us. So they're all in there, and they're all ready. This Grave Plots thing is something that I'm very fond of. It is a lot of mental gymnastics for creativity. Right. It's totally a love-hate thing with me the way like, i picture it is like when when people sit down to come up with a movie idea and they brainstorm different ideas it's like we sit down and come up with these movies and some of them are amazing some of them are just okay and and i think most of them are really good yeah like we always give it something to make it more interesting but we come up with all the characters and everything so we don't even know what the name of the episode is at this point right now because we haven't even pulled it out of the crystal skull with diamond eyes right so, but I don't want to get into that too much. I just want to get your your little pants wet for some, <laughs> some grave plot action. Some pre-moistening. What I do, by the way, guys, I'm going to be adding sound effects to this episode, too, so that it will give you a heightened experience while listening to it. So instead of just us telling the story, it'll break out into different things in the background while we're talking. It'll, you know, I'll do some voice acting probably at some point, just whatever the, the moment calls for. You is. might hear me fapping off in the yeah, corner. You know? That's usually him anyway. <laughs> um, we're going to accentuate it this time, though. <laughs> Uh, I don't know about that, Patrick. You're freaking me out. <laughs> <laughs> Just look at it. <laughs> <laughs> we got like three different drinks here today, guys. We got, um, I got some OJ. Oh, you never gave me a little, give me a little try of that. Dude. Oh, you want to try it? Give okay. me a little. Well, now that it's nice and cool. He's all mixology today. So Patrick walked on down to the store. I didn't even realize he was doing that, but he walked down to the store. Ooh. Yeah. That's nice. We got 99 watermelons. Um, part of the reason I drink this shit is not because it's like, you know, I don't like fruity drinks, to be quite honest with you, for the most part. I just like alcohol. Yeah. But I like strong alcohol. So if you can kind of mask some of that strength, <laughs> these, for some reason, I don't even know what it is. I think it's like schnapps or something, it like a high proof yeah. schnapps or something. Uh, I always think of it as like vodka. You know, like when you mix it, you think of like different alcohols that mix with other mm -hmm. alcohols. It's kind of like vodka in a way, but I don't, I don't really know. So if you guys know and you want to rub it in my face in the comment section down below, please do. I wish you could like buy bigger bottles of them because you never you see can, like You can, you can, you can. You got to order them online line though uh, so. um uh but anyway patrick got two uh like a bunch of 99 watermelons like four of the little shot glasses for like a like a 99 cents and uh i got some oj from mcdonald's earlier and i poured in my 99 watermelons into that and mixed Did you it put up both of them in there just one i don't think it needs two that's a bit much plus we got some paps blue ribbon here guys um, Going Patrick, classy. Patrick bought like a whole case of it. Like, what the fuck? Well, the twelve pack was like fucking like I think eight bucks. Oh yeah. So it's like, why not? They're like, you guys are classy. Yeah. <laughs> Got to keep it classy. So, so what's up with you? How's your week been? Oh, it's, it's been all right. I got my transcript back. So figured you, out how many credits I need. I need like four, which is awesome. So yeah, I'll be able, might maybe be able to finish that in like two months. That's good. So, and then we're on to my EMT training and. 
see how long that takes me. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Well, other than that, not much. I, uh, you know, I did want to mention this. I, I'm, I am super excited about the uh, Resident Evil reboot. Oh. Uh, yeah. I was watching, a, before I passed out last night, I put the first movie on. And I, I really did think they did a good job with that movie. Well, I don't think good is a good word. <laughs> I mean, it's not a perfect movie. It's, it's not a perfect movie. There's good things in it. There's good things in it that I like about the original Resident Evil movie. Well, watching that movie, you can see... Like, the idea of where it would take off from the video game. You know what I mean? Right. It didn't feel exactly like the video game or anything like no, that. No, not by any means. There was some nods, you know, with the whole mansion and, yeah. like, how it went underground and stuff like that. And that was cool. And, you know, they turned her into some secret agent, you know, that, like, some, uh, what do they call her, sleeper agent. Right. And, you know, I, I, the, the movie was fine, but, like, honestly, and I'm sorry, guys, if you're huge fans of the Resident Evil franchise, but the same people who are doing this reboot are the same people that fucking pounded us with a bunch of garbage. Yeah, six episodes, or six six movies. Granted, that. if you really want to hang on to the whole franchise, when you think about Resident Evil, I feel like they took from, like, part six. Yeah. Or decided, from four on. Right. Well, like, there's stuff from the original. I'm talking about overall tone. They took from part six. Yeah. And then just, or is it, yeah, six. Six and five. They took from those two and, like, turned them into movies. Like, they were like, they took some of the old concepts and mixed it in with it, but they gave that overall tone of, like, the games five or six, like, which a lot of people don't like. A lot of people are fans of the fourth game on back. Right. A lot of people love the fourth game. In my opinion, I've always liked the first two. The first two are my favorite. Always. I, I mean, be. I'll take that. I'll, I, I, I even have the Dreamcast uh, Code Veronica. Oh, dude. that See, that's one that I've never really got to play. And everybody Nobody says did. the fucking the storyline on that is absolutely twisted. Right. But I just I just have my doubts, though, on this new reboot. Like, I don't want to get my hopes up. I'm just like, it's going to happen no matter what. The same people that made the other one. Yeah, there's different writers and they're going to put a different spin on it. But, you know, they say that with every movie, really. And like sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't most times not i just wish they would connect the 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 one the first movie that came out and then this new reboot well they keep talking about how it's gonna be so scary yeah yeah they're like it's gonna be scary <laughs> which is like overused hyperbole like you yeah know, it is it's it, like it really dude like i've heard that with every fucking movie i've ever seen mm. <gasps> gotta be so scary <laughs> it's like yeah right you mean it's it's scary to you because you're trying to sell it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I don't get scared anymore, but, you know, to be fair, to give, you know, both sides of the coin here. Yeah. You know, but, I mean, I don't know. Like, what, it may be scary to kids. I don't know. But Resident Evil turned into, like, like I was saying before, it turned into, like, part five of the Resident Evil series, which is a little bit more action and, you know. Well, four is where it took the really big turn. Like, or it really started making a lot of big leaps. You know, as far as like what the zombies could do, the evolution of them, all that jazz. Well, I don't know. I played one of my favorite games I played this year is probably Resident Evil Two Remake. <laughs> that, yeah, that was amazing, dude. It like, was good. I really enjoyed that. I, I it made me appreciate Part Two more than I ever liked it. Mm -hmm. You know, like I I don't know. Maybe that's like sinful for other people to say, but I don't know. I'm I'm just kind of I don't have my hopes up for it, man. Um, what about you guys? I'm curious to see. Are you excited about the new Resident Evil, or are you just kind of like, eh, wait and see? From what I see online, I didn't get to read too deeply in it, but Mila Jolovich is not happy about that. Oh, well, because she's not in it. Yeah, probably. <laughs> she sank her career for it. That's why. <laughs> no offense, but I mean, let's be honest. What was the other action movie she did that was in Resident Evil? Was it uh, Ultraviolet? Ultraviolet, yeah. which isn't a bad film, actually. Yeah, dude, some of the some of the shit in that movie was actually pretty good looking. It's it's, it's a it's a it's an indulgent film. It's yeah. a, it's one of those films that you're like, ah, oh, yeah, whatever. Eye candy. Yeah, it's it's stupid fun. You know, like it's I bought it on Blu-ray. I have it because I was like, you know what? It's it was cheap. It's a good enough looking movie to have it on blu-ray well sometimes you just want to watch like really uh expensive garbage you know <laughs> <laughs> i mean it's not garbage but it's just you know it's just... like i was saying i can't it's just something to throw on in the background right you know yeah. whatever you don't have to pay a lot of attention to it but you know what look do you up. think Oh, sorry. Go no, ahead. I was just saying you look up. And like, oh, that's, that's cool. Whatever. <laughs> anyway, guys, are you excited for it? Let us know in the comments down below. 
This week, we don't uh, have any horror shots because we don't know what the fucking movie's about yet. No. We don't know what the name of the movie is either, so... Uh, I but think... that doesn't mean we're not going to be drinking some Sambu. Oh, yeah, that's right. We should uh, we should drink up here real quick. I mean, we got 99 watermelons, but... We got to do our shots because it'll loosen us up for the fucking train wreck that's about to happen. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Let's get it on. Rock on, brother. Rock on. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna so do I'm gonna do a double shot here. Did you put some ninety nine watermelons in there? No, of course not. That'd be disgusting. Cheers. Uh, like I I might definitely put my ninety nine watermelons in there because it's just easier to shoot that way. Huh. It was weird. I was breathing in the fumes of that fucking because I took the the sambuca, the sambuca, and then immediately after I took the ninety nine watermelons. Yeah, and it felt like peppermint. Like I was breathing in like <laughs> really strong peppermint or something, and I was like, huh? Ooh, and the black licorice with the watermelon is really disgusting. By the way, it doesn't mix. The banana tastes better than watermelon. Yeah, that made me oof, oof. God, dude, that was too much. All right, guys. So now I think it's time for us to go ahead. Jump into our own segment that we made up called Grave Plots. And I hope that you'll stick around for because it's the true spirit of creativity, guys. And for those of you who know what it's like to ride the tidal wave, like surf the tidal wave of creativity and just like let it carry you to wherever it goes. It's kind of interesting to see how this whole thing develops. Sometimes it's a little hard to follow. But we're going to get it done for you today. So let's go ahead and jump into our Grave Plots. If you would like to participate in this, by the way, you can. In fact... We encourage it. If you've ever been to our website, longlivethevoid.com, you can go to our contact section and submit a grave plot for us to fucking add to the pile. Now, there's two things that I ask of you to do. One, try not to use anything that's ever been used before. And two, give us one or two. That's enough for the for the time being. I don't want to oversaturate. I want to give everybody the equal opportunity to, to be able to do it. So you can go to longlivethevoid.com, add your movie title, make sure you inco- include your name that you want us to say on the, on the air. We'll give you full credit for that as for the name that we got to use to instigate us into a story about this thing so let's get into this guys so here's the way it works okay so we had a crystal skull with diamond eyes that's worth a lot of fucking money don't ask how we got it it includes time travel we've built this story over many episodes uh, <laughs> uh so what we're gonna do is we're basically going to pull a name out of this skull crystal who's pulling it i'm pulling it this no way. no 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 come on no I no, bet- no fuck that shit you nope. did it- call it Oh, my God. Jesus Christ. Fucking heads. Whatever. Fuck. Go Thank ahead. Thank you. Fine. We get to do what I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> Which I knew was going to happen anyway, because I'm a fucking genius. All right. I'm pulling one out. So we're pulling one of these names out. This could be mine, Patrick's, Brittany's, my saga, any of the directors that have been on to do this shit, uh, any of our guests. Are there any mics left in there? I don't know. This is a title that I actually pulled and I, I wrote today. And I actually told Patrick it, which was just because I thought it was a cool name. Because I came up with like three different names. I was like, Crucifier or the Crucifix, Crucifix or Crucifixer. <laughs> and I was like, Crucifixer sounds so much cooler, right? Christine even said so, too. So the title for this week's Grave Plots is Crucifixer. Yeah. So. Um, Patrick is going to basically come up with the, the premise of the story a little bit, uh, cause he doesn't know what the story, well, he has, maybe has a concept in his mind based on the name alone, but I came up with it and I already kind of have some preconceived sort of things. So what the way it works guys is Patrick's going to come up with an idea off the top of his head. He's going to pitch it to me. I can turn it down, but ultimately he has the say in it. The first say. So I'm going to digest it and see what comes out the other end. Right. You know what I'm saying? And then and saying, I can rebuttal him and then say, hey, well, I think it should be about this. And then if he's like, oh, that's actually pretty cool, then we can move forward from there. But if I don't come up with something that he's interested in, then we just stick with whatever he's 
he's doing. And I might just do that to be a dick. Well, I'm pretty convincing. So. <laughs> yeah. It's a pretty good. I got a convincer. I've got nice speech craft. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't not how well I do it, but just how convincing it could be. Anyway, <laughs> go ahead. Let's see. Well, so like, what, what comes to your mind when you think crucifixer. of the crucifixer? Yeah, break it on down as you're as you're developing this in your well, mind. I don't because... actually. I don't actually think of some a man of faith. Okay, someone who's uh close to God. Okay. maybe maybe and uh touches children touches children yeah you know <laughs> I'm kidding i'm sorry don't no, just don't. go 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 i should have interrupted that's your thoughts go ahead we're, we're cutting it's, it's, it's interesting not... to see where you go yeah well no i know but i want to see what you no that's not what i was thinking i was just being a douche yeah. but anyway continue on okay so anyways a I'm man think, of faith i'm thinking a man who's close to close to god obviously a god-fearing man okay. maybe who who's uh, maybe questioning his faith okay and maybe uh, taking his his vengeance on those who have uh, been around him, maybe his colleagues who have seen he's done wrong in his eyes as far as what his faith is. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, he actually is, like, following the faith, and other people are doing shit that's maybe contrary to what his beliefs are, but are in the same faith as him. Okay, that's interesting. And then maybe taking his vengeance on them. Okay. I'm thinking, can I tell you what I'm thinking? It, give it to Just me. Just to see what you think. I mean, I, I got a little bit of a different spin. You kind of helped me add a little bit more to what I was thinking in my mind. What if he was a man of faith, but somehow followed the dark side by accident? Like the, the darker, the like evil side? So like Luke Skywalker. No, because he <laughs> saw some things he mistook. He mistakenly accepted events that happened before him as events of God mm. instead of what they really were, were acts, not acts of evil necessarily, but, but just, maybe like malice. Like, no, no, no. Just like something that he saw because God is a vengeful spirit, right? Or God is a vengeful God, whatever you want to call it. What if like he saw like what we would call a moment of like a mir miraculous moment, a miracle happen, but really it was just evil. No, oh, like what? And Maybe. it doesn't even have to be like God and the devil. It could be just something darker, older than than we think. You know what I mean? Like something more just like almost like a I don't, like in my mind, I'm picturing sort of a supernatural slasher. Oh, yeah. Along the lines of like Freddy and. Things like that, you know, like something where they live through anything just about and they're just this hawking beast court sort of kind of thing. You know, I don't know how to explain that in better terms, but I'm thinking of like this priest, like his backstory. We find out it's kind of like Hellraiser where he was like curious about what happened mm. and then became evil. Kind of like through his curiosity of understanding Right, like maybe a miracle happened where they saved a guy who he would think that is a good person. It was it was a good deed that God had a miracle happen to save this person's life, but that person ended up being a serial killer. Okay. Do you see what I'm saying? Like yeah. I'm just I'm not saying that, that it needs to be in the movie necessarily, but he wasn't thinking that far ahead, you know, cuz God's plan is so divine and you know, you shouldn't question God's plan. His plan is, you know, all seeing. So really, like he thinks it's a good deed, but really, the the reason that the 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 evil side saved him is so that he was able to kill hundreds of people later on. Hmm. Do you see yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I like that. And so, like this sort of distorts this guy's this priest or clergyman of some sort, his perspective or whatever. And somehow, I I don't know how, but he gets pulled into this like darker realm at some point because he pledges his allegiance to. Uh, this entity, which he thinks is God, but really isn't. And it's some this darker spirit that tricked him because, you know, it's evil. It tricks him. Maybe uh, it's the same spirit that tricked the guy that he saved into doing to what he did. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe there's some sort of... Uh, I don't think he, he's out killing people for, for being, uh, you know... I don't know. I know it's not a kind of anti-slasher when you say, oh, Lucas are having sex, uh, you know, stupid shit like that. But I mean, maybe he just kills people because I mean, there might be a, there might be a thread that 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 we can connect later on. But I, for right now, just keep it simple. And I'm also thinking that he uses a large cross, like a really heavy metal cross as a weapon. He literally holds it down to his side like a mace 
and fucking kills people. Maybe like it. one of those things like the altar boys walk out with, like big fucking. It, it needs to be heavy cross. Yeah. Like he's strong. Like a bow staff with like a cross at the end of it or something. No, I want it to be a big cross, like a literal big cross, I think, where you, he can stab people with one end of it. You're talking about like, you know, like Final Fantasy stack tactics, like where it's like cloud with like a fucking sword that's like twice kind as Kind of, fucking... but yeah, with a cross on the end that's like really big. <laughs> okay. I don't want it to be this little tiny cross. I want it to be a cross. Yeah. Like a big cross that he might even drag across the ground. Or and like when you hear the crucifixer coming, he's dragging his cross. Or maybe like, you know, lugging around on his back, like, you know. I think it would like be kind of interesting himself. to have him drag it in some of the part of the movie mm -hmm. where you hear him dragging it across the like, ground. So, you know, he's coming, but you don't know where, <laughs> you know, like that little like Mr. Jingles, like they added the keys to him so that they could like hear the jingles whenever he's coming. OK, you see what I mean? Or in like um, another example is like uh, in uh, the autopsy of Jane Doe, where they have the little bell on the foot. Mm. It's just those little 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 things. You know, like that don't really matter, but it's like, you know, they're coming. So it makes it worse. <laughs> I don't know. But I just in my mind, I'm picturing a guy killing people with a cross, dude. And I how we tie it together. I don't give a fuck. But like, as long as he's killing people, with a fucking cross. Like, I'm all about it. <laughs> <laughs> I do like that idea. I think it's good. So you think the cross thing? OK. Yeah, I like so it. So we're cool on that, at least. Yeah. Do you care about like how he came across? Like, do we need to, to elaborate on his backstory and like have fill it in a little bit before we launch him into fucking murdering people nonstop brutally? Well, he would obviously obviously have to have some kind of um oh drive to save people. I just thought of a really fucking cool. Well, fucking, feed it to me. Dude. Oh my what do you god! Got? Oh my god! It just stuff like this just pops in my head when I start thinking about it. Like I'm like, how do you? How does someone kill like someone with a cross so many different times uniquely? What if? Okay, so guys, I know this is how sporadic this shit is. Like this is how creativity works. You just like brain you're like synapses fire um but so like i'm thinking of like someone running away from the crucifixer uh, from crucifixer and they're they're like ready to kill themselves because they just want to get away from them and they try to jump out the window of a of an addict or something like that and as they jump out he's like running after them and he takes his fucking sword outside the window and hooks them in the mouth <laughs> and rips the top of their head off you know what I mean? As they're falling. Okay. Because he's so strong, he can whip that thing. Whip that fucking Like, thing. it's not heavy to him at all. It's almost like a, a paperclip to him. He's just like, reek. Well, well, you know, he got the armor of Christ on. You know what right. I'm saying? He gets that power. I think, um, like, I really would love to see, like, a sort of version where it's it's like almost like um, a Cenobite, you know? Like, this guy's like a Cenobite where he's, like, wearing, like, preacher clothes, but like their leather and like little bondage as yeah and him. like his face is almost like kind of fucked up like fucking darth vader kind of style does that make sense like like something like he's decrepit and like old and right like f fleshy but like pale br blue skin and like and maybe his eyes glow like what are some features that we can come up with plus we also need to come up with a backstory a little bit like why he turned evil maybe it was like to save his son's life or something like that you know what i mean like i thought we already did that where he he saved somebody he thought he was doing something right good, but, but really but when he realizes that it's actual evil at some point they well maybe that person end up killing his family or a specific person of his family that he held really close like a right son well, no, or no, a that's wife. what i'm saying like maybe maybe they were going to take his son and he's like and he's like why would you do this to me after i served you even though you were not the person i thought or you were the god i thought you were why would you do this he's like well it's very simple you can i can save your son's life as long as you allow me to take over your entire be and you can only watch this terror through your eyes for the rest of your eternity serving me Hmm. as a co-pilot and i will uh, allow this demon to and so maybe maybe that'll may be an interesting kind of side thing where he when he's about to kill somebody like it, it flashes a memory or something but it doesn't prevent him from being evil he just is evil so he's evil so he's not out for vengeance no i don't think it should be a vengeance story i think that's stupid um but i think he's just evil pure evil and they're trying to collect uh innocent souls 
Okay. You know what I mean? Or maybe even, I don't know, maybe maybe not Innocent Souls. I don't know. Whatever. What do you think? Like, honestly, I, I think it's well, kinda- it could be like that whole spawn aspect where you're trying to build Satan's army. So you are going after those evil people just well, maybe, because they make more of a powerful. I got it. I got it. So his son gets cancer. OK. And after he serves this God, he realizes that not everything's all right in Denmark. And so he's like, well, I don't mean Denmark. It's just the same <laughs> <laughs> for those of you who are really young. Um, but. What if he's like got cancer and he's like, I've done everything for you. And I know that you're not the person that you you're not the God that I thought you were, you know, but I've done everything that you said. You owe me this. And he's like, I'll do it for you. You know, like some voice that he hears. You will be my husk, my sword. You will be the darkness that scares away the light. The vial that burns the angels. I will use you, and you will be my co pilot, watching the terror unfold before you. Do it! But may God damn you! <laughs> This is very, very spawn esque. I'm just saying that's where this where my mind went to. Oh, okay. Well, how about this then? We'll change it up. How about his son isn't sick with cancer? Then he is in fact a victim of his own father's servants. Hmm. So he serves this god, and in doing so, he ends up killing his own son. Oh shit! And becomes so enraged with hatred for this god that it actually consumes him and he becomes a co-pilot to this god's this this evil god's plan do vengeance so it's a, he's like going through people men of faith that are in the, his church i'm saying i think he should just go out and kill he becomes so enraged that the god makes him see things that he thinks he's doing good but he's not he's actually killing innocent people hmm. do you understand what i'm saying yeah like it doesn't need it could be change the rules of horror altogether. We don't need to be oh if you have sex you're gonna die Jason trope. <laughs> He's just a fucking murdering psychopath, like fucking crazy fucking evil fucking demon that has embraced his body, taken control of him, made him a backseat to it, and make him see whatever the fucking god, the evil god wants him to see. Like almost like he's wearing a VR helmet, seeing something completely different than what he's doing. He thinks he's stopping good in his mind but we don't need to really like get into that this is just sort of a backstory like for for how we build this character yeah do you see what i mean like yeah. the movie wouldn't necessarily show this it's just a backstory on the character so that we can like we could show him accidentally killing his son thinking he's doing a good thing and they would get the implied intention of the god the evil god that would control his body and turn him into some sort of cenobite christian faith kind of evil soldier yeah like evil soldier that carries a fucking cross and kills people i mean it's pretty cool right oh yeah (laughs) i don't know what do you think do you like that though like no i do do you have anything else i don't want to be like anything else so like when you said spawn that like tripped me up i was like what (laughs) but then you kind of saw what i was talking about right i figured it out another way around so we could do it differently so yeah but i like the idea that he's kind of a co-pilot to this whole fucking situation and so maybe he sees things and every now and then he gets a a a vision of like him doing bad and it kind of stalls him but it doesn't stop the evil from going out and killing like so you're saying like the possession isn't complete like he can almost see what he's really doing but not completely yeah he sees enough for him to live in hell essentially mentally um but also might be able to like stagger the creature from swinging Mm. you know not a hundred percent but just you know just a moment that he might have a memory kind of like how the Cenobites did kind of how Jason did right you know with Jason's mom and shit like that it's just one of those little tiny weaknesses that you know we don't need to figure that out until like the third sequel anyway so <laughs> <laughs> crucifixer three God's hell you know <laughs> hell on earth yeah hell on God's wheel hell in heaven <laughs> <laughs> heavenly demons whatever the fuck um so okay now that we kind of like built this story like what do we who do we want to um this story to revolve around who's the um protagonist well the protagonist has to be uh protagonist is the one that's 
being threatened or... Yeah, it's not the bad person. Yeah, right. It's the person being a victim of, yes. So the pro- protagonist should be... I don't know. What what name should we give this guy? Well, like, don't even worry about the name. Think about what what, what kind of cool, interesting uh, person that hasn't been done in a horror movie that you might want to add. That's why I always do it. It's like, think of like, okay, well, I've seen so many horror movies. What have they not done in a horror movie? Like, what kind of job, <laughs> you know, would be an interesting one? Maybe a, an altar boy. Oh, God, that's too typical. That's way too typical. Yeah, but have you seen a horror movie about an altar boy? I think it'd be interesting to have, like, a priest or something try to help whoever the protagonists are. But I think, like, doing an altar boy is, like, way too on the nose. It's on the nose, but, I mean, it's fitting. I think I think it should just be more obscured and mysterious than that. Because that's just too by the book, in my opinion. Do you know what I mean? Am I wrong for that? Like, I, I'm not I, wrong for that. I mean, it's it'd be fu- a funny movie if we were to turn it into a funny movie. But I want to, I've, I I get the vibe that this is kind of serious. So then he would obviously have to be a priest. Well, I I think he will be added into the mix when they go to get help, maybe, and then he dies. His faith isn't even strong enough to battle the fucking crucifixer. Right. And he, like, crucifies the guy or something like that. That'd be interesting. But, like, who are the protagonists in this story outside of of, of anything related to priests or religion? You know, that, that's too tropey. I mean, it would be, like I said, if it was a comedy, I think it would be funny. But I think we should turn this into something real. Like, this could be a real slasher. I feel like the crucifixer, or just crucifixer, is like a guy who steals souls from the innocent because he is a man of the faith. He somehow is able well, to maybe bri- a, a school, bridge that gap. Like a school teacher. I don't know. What other ideas do you have with that? Well, I was going to say, you can you can bend into just a regular school teacher, you know, regular whatever, you know, it's your basic school teacher. And then you can even work in a side character who was like the metal shop guy who did the metal shop class. I would feel like it needs to be some guy who's kind of like in a shitty job or a girl who's in a shitty job. Maybe like like a fast food employee or something. But almost like I almost feel like it's like a shitty job, but it's also like it could be a police officer or a fireman or, you know, like something that has some prestige to it, you know, that is like not easy. Maybe like a fireman or something. Maybe they stumble upon this this act because... Or what if it's a bad guy, even? Like, it could be a criminal, hmm. and he has to stop the bad thing, because it's even more evil than he is. Well, maybe it's, uh, like, uh, maybe, like, somebody who's doing, um, what do you call that, where, like, you have, like, prisoners picking up, like, trash on the side of the road. Maybe he's doing something like that, and witnesses something that goes on. That might be a little too limited, because we'd have to do it in the prison. Okay. Maybe he's, like, one of the guys that works for people, like the driver, who's, like... You Maybe know. he's like an Uber driver. Or no, 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 no. I mean, like a driver for like a fucking bank heist type guy, you know, where he's not necessarily the bad guy, but legally he's not a he good guy. He is an accomplice. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's always like that kind of thing, you know. But that was actually done in a couple of movies I've watched recently, so maybe that's why I'm thinking that. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, what is it? What is an interesting job? Like a paramedic, maybe. Yeah, maybe, maybe a paramedic would be a good idea. Because maybe he's like tending to one of the victims of the crucifix. That's good because I like that Nicolas Cage movie. Um, oh yeah, where I can't remember. What was it the night sh- night shift? No, 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 no. Bringing out the dead. That's the one. Yeah, Bringing Out the Dead. What a great film. Yeah. Like, I feel like it could be something like that, where he's, like, actually going to the scenes uh, of the, you know, to try to help people or something like that. He could be a paramedic, or maybe he works for the fucking coroner's office, Mm. and he gets tied up in it somehow. Maybe, like, the two of them together. Like, maybe it's, like, an EMT guy who's friend with, like, a coroner that he Yeah, like, he could be a detective. He could be, like, I don't know. Detective's kind of, like... A little on the nose. Yeah. Yeah. But, But maybe a paramedic might... And then he tries to get involved with the coroner's office, who's like, hey, you're not, this isn't your job. Right. He's just kind of curious about what happened. Right. Because that. he's like, this is really weird. I just saw some fucking crazy shit. I saw a guy get fucking murdered in front of me. And somehow he's being haunted by maybe the guy, because he saw the crucifixer, he's like getting hunted by him in hmm. some way. I don't know. I feel like um, the crucifixer should maybe murder. I don't know. Is it too dark to say children? <laughs> I mean, I don't think. Enough horror movies take it to that. You know what I mean? Like, a lot of people try to stray away from so, that. So, teens. So, teens is okay. That's why everybody always picks teens, because right. 
Okay. I mean, true I, slasher I have no, fashion, right? I have no problem with killing children. Maybe, 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 maybe. I don't think. I think it's too much because we got fucking Freddy Krueger who does that. We don't really need to worry about that, right? Well, Freddy Krueger also just goes after teens. I've never seen him kill children. Children? Did you say Freddy Krueger? Freddy Krueger. Uh, <laughs> Kruger. He's a cougar. cougar. He's like out there looking for those young uh, bucks. Yeah, yeah, he do. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think teens are fine. You know, like he kills. Uh, maybe he just kills anybody that's innocent. Yeah, it could be an old woman. It could be a young person. Whatever, it doesn't matter. I I feel like it's just like he, they can't find any connection as to why he's murdering everyone. He's just this un stoppable demon demonic force yeah there's got to be way some way that they like prevent him and then they stab like a like a like they spill holy water they bless a fucking crucifix or some shit and stab it into his chest and he dies or you know what I mean? <laughs> some stupid shit what do you think no i like that so we got so what are the protagonists again you're a paramedic guy paramedic yeah okay so i like that guy because he's already kind of surrounded by death in a way so his his ideology about death and life and shit like that might be kind of an interesting dynamic to fuck with uh i'm sure he will still be scared out of his mind seeing a fucking demonic creature with blue fucking skin uh and a fucking (laughs) leather fucking uh like get up going around killing people like a pin fate yeah like pinhead fucking like i feel like he should have like a like a crucifix fixer should have like a high collar that almost comes up like something you would see out of van helsing or something right but like he's got the big white thing the collar collar right yeah no i like that i I almost think of like yeah like the old like those priest hats with the fucking huge bill you think it doesn't I was, have to be. I'm just I was, like, that's I was, what I see. I was thinking more like just him, no hair, like his hair is falling out. Kind of like, like I was saying, like Darth Vader, mm. where his face is just like, just fucked up. And like the thing that covers it is maybe this, that huge collar that he's got. Comes yeah, he's got this really huge collar and it, and he's got this little, or maybe it's just an overcoat that pops up like man Helsing sort of style. And he carries around this crucifix, you know what I mean? While he's wearing this like leather get up. <laughs> and this crucifix is like at least like what, like six foot? I don't know like about big. six foot, but maybe like four foot. All right. Like it's something that he has to hold sort of in the middle and he can, it's like a two handed fucking act, right. like cross sword <laughs> see I, I i'm totally picturing like almost like a like i said like it's something like an altar boy would hold where it's like you know it's like a staff with like a cross at the end of it yeah but that would be like a bollard or ballard or whatever the fuck they call those things where it's like a long stick yeah it's, nah, no no i think he needs that fucking blunt force fucking straight up cross for some reason he's an anomaly in the demon world because he's a priest do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, he can do things that demons can't do, like kill the innocent. Because mm. demons, technically, are, for the most part, I don't know if they kill innocent people or not, do they? They infect them, but they don't kill them. What do you think? I don't know. I just like the blunt force fucking the cross. Right. Are you cool with that? No, I am. I'm uh, I, Just me, I'm just trying to picture with the cross. Like, and I automatically, like I said, go to Final Fantasy, where it's just like a huge fucking... Yeah, I mean, it might, we, we, we got to make it a little bit, little, a little reasonable, but I think um, him being able to just two hand axe sort of swing a fucking cross is yeah. is good by me. You know, maybe it even is an axe like looking thing, but it's got a cross on the end. Hmm. You know, like it's got this weird, it's this really unique design where it's got like a wooden handle with like adornment, like old shit. And maybe it's metal, or maybe it's like. Some sort of obsidian, and or no, obsidian's too mandy. Um, but it's just like, you know, it just looks really unique. Like, it's got right. a curved end, so it's got like a like a handle like you would for a shotgun almost, but like on the end, and then it's like a silvery cross that he swings around. No, I definitely like that, yeah. I don't want to mess silver, but whatever's hard and shiny. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I think it would be cool. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we need to get into, like, the protagonist and, like, how he finds what's the first thing that he sees. Like, maybe he shows up to a scene um, where one of the people have died and they, they the police, you know, then find out it's a murder and then they have to do their thing. But there's, like, you know, maybe, like, there's a guy that got swung at and, like, is dying on the scene as they go up to help him. Hmm. And 
and they've realized it's a murder scene, but they're trying to save his life. You know, they're paramedics. And maybe, like... And the guy says something to him, you know? That or maybe not even say something. Maybe it's, like, he can't even talk, so he's just kind of, like, writing something in his own blood to mm-hmm. give a clue to, a, like, who had killed him. I think he could say, like, a single word or a priest, something like that, you know, where they're like, wait, what the fuck? He's talking about a priest. Right. Maybe he says something about, he, like, he's He's lost his mind. He's dying. You gotta help him out, you know? Like, just don't... Never mind that. Yeah. And so then, like... The paramedic. What, what is the guy's name for the paramedic? Uh, Cliff. I don't know. Okay, Cliff. And then he's got a buddy name that he works with. That's his partner. Paramedic buddy. Eric. Okay. I'm just throwing shit out Cliff there. Cliff and Eric. Okay, cool. So Cliff, I kind of picture him being like um, a really nice guy. Yeah. But like also downtrodden. Like a John Goodman. <laughs> well, just like kind of like the kind of guy who is... He believes in the good in the world, but doesn't always get handed the good in the world. Mm. I think he's like one of those in-betweeners. And his buddy's kind of like the asshole who likes to go to strip clubs, shit like that after work, you know, stuff like that. Okay. You know, so Eric is the, 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 the like kind of like typical guy, you know, like that you would stereotype while he is the more complex and individual who maybe went to church as a kid. Fell out of God. Right. Where he ha- he used to have like a concrete foundation of what his faith was. Right. Until maybe something shook so, that. Yeah. Like that's why he said he's kind of the in-between guy. Yeah. You know, where he doesn't really believe in anything necessarily, but things start to make him wonder because of uh, all this talk about a priest or whatever. Maybe they even have a nickname for the crucifier or the crucifixer. Maybe like the fixer. <laughs> no, maybe no. they call him the, the bloody priest or the like. The slaughter saint. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hey, that's not bad. It's with Saint Slaughter. Saint Slaughter. There you go. Yeah. And like maybe you know they have that religion there where they worship uh, death, where people like crawl on the ground for like Saint Death. <laughs> okay. You've never heard of this? Yeah. Is that like for penance or something like that? They like crawl. Well, on they their- believe in death and that that death has gotten a bad rap and that we should be worshiping death, not. Yeah, I've never heard of this. Yeah, it's interesting. But I don't know. I just, you know, it's just something that, like, maybe, like, they add in it and they think, like, some people... Like, there's this other cult that's, like, like grabbing on Right, they think that he's part of that somehow, you know, like, because you can ask for certain things that wishes, so to speak, like, you pray for these things to happen, and then when death happens, it's actually a good thing. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. It's interesting. You should look it up on Dark Tourism. They have that show on Netflix where they talk about Dark Tourism, and then he goes to that place where people crawl on the ground for, like, a mile just to go worship death wow. <laughs> that's crazy yeah this lady in a curio shop started it interesting right yeah that's fucking weird yeah that's i mean fucking, I mean, the wow. way she says it though you're kind of like yeah that kind of makes sense <laughs> yeah, you're like well oh this is how you hook so many people okay. yeah <laughs> check they even had a i think they're pretty sure there's it's been in a movie too or you know it's interesting i don't know how to explain it but um but yeah so like he he so he sees this guy who's got his uh his entire chest ripped open and maybe maybe he's even like broken the guy's like the guy's got stab wounds from the cross in his chest and he's like what the fuck did this you know like what Mm. do you think did this he's like i I don't know it's almost like it's like someone stuck a fucking i don't know like a blunt object into their chest because it's it makes no sense there's no puncture like it would be if it was a knife or something like that and he's like i don't know and then they find some guy off in the distance in an alleyway or something like that who's or like, maybe there's some who's kind dying of, like from the blunt force trauma maybe there's some indentation from whatever kind of religious scripture was on this cross and he kind of makes that connection you know what I'm saying? Maybe, like, yeah. Like, the they call the paramedics because someone's getting murdered or something. They hear him in the alleyway screaming. And, like, maybe we should talk about how the guy dies before the paramedics showed up. What do you think? Yeah. So, like, one guy's in the alleyway, and he's doing what? Maybe he's just, like, some vagrant. Maybe he's trying to get high. Maybe he's huffing pain or... Uh, maybe he's a dickhead too because you enjoy his death that way too right you know what i mean maybe he's robbing somebody right maybe he kills somebody or something like that yeah you know so maybe 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 the the priest does kill people who are sinners kind of makes you feel good when they could die Uh, right (laughs) (laughs) i don't know i'm just saying you know it's like a little justification like i said maybe maybe that's what the demon wants maybe he wants souls that are going to be able to midway souls aid, aid the cause instead of 
Right, because the, f- the, the, the purer the soul, the stronger the power. That's why they want to kill innocent babies and shit like that. Do you know what I mean? Like, sacrifice babies. Right. Because it gives them more power. Hmm. <laughs> Virgin, <laughs> virgin blood. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. but anyway, so it, it, well, we don't even need to cross that. We don't even need to answer those questions until the sequels. So we don't need to worry about that. I guess I'm just making things complicated. Um, but yeah, so they show up. They they go to help some woman uh, or man or whatever that's like hurt. He's got a cut on his arm and he's and he's bleeding out. You know, because the guy swung at him too, um, and and maybe some like gang guys, like thug guys, shot him, shot the fucking crucifixer. Oh, like they were on his turf or whatever. Like, what the fuck are you doing in our yeah, alley? Yeah, they were like, what the fuck is that, man? This is our fucking turf. What the fuck are you doing? This right. we only rob people back here. <laughs> right. So like, they see him roughing up a a fucking homeless guy who like robbed some other homeless people in the alleyway or whatever, and that's when they go and then. Like everybody gets shredded, like the 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 mob people get shredded, like a motherfucker, like the vagrants and the mob, and yeah, like one but, but one of the maybe maybe when the guy he stabbed is still alive to steal from them, you know, the homeless guy that stabs the other homeless people, yeah, like maybe it's a couple or something like that, or he's like taking their radios, and right? Like, like he's like using his power against them, yeah, and then they then uh the crucifixer shows up fucking crucifixer shows up and then he's like starts fucking standing in front of this homeless guy and he's like hey can i help you <laughs> yeah he's like can i help you with his bottle of booze and his little brown paper yeah. bag the fuck are you on <laughs> maybe that's what he stole maybe he stole like other people's liquor and shit right you just see like from his waist down and you see him holding the bottle and then you see like the camera goes in front of the homeless guy and pans up to see this dark shadowy guy with a collar and he's just like all of a sudden you just see like the shot back to kind of swing something as the homeless guy's yelling at him the one that fucking stole from those other people well maybe he has like that bottle of liquor that he just stabbed somebody for right well yeah that's what i'm saying like he's holding the liquor in his right hand down by his side what the fuck are you on? right and he see the shadowy guy and then when you see him kind of move you can't tell what he's about to do but you think he's gonna swing something and then the next thing you hear is thud and like blood starts trickling down the arm of the thing and he drops the the bottle or maybe even crushes the bottle in his you know what might be cool is that like if like the blood that's coming off his body is filling the liquor bottle up from his arm you know it's like dripping down his arm into the actual bottle right i mean that'd be cool like i just think it'd be kind of dramatic to see you don't see his head get exploded right just his arm in the bottle right and then when they show up and the emts show up they see like his head's pretty much popped pretty much like into three pieces like by the crucifix that he's fucking <laughs> yielding like fucking swinging smashes him on the head and then walks out as blood's trailing he's dragging it behind him and then like some some thug kids are like yo what the fuck man motherfucker's dragging across his shit yo what are you doing up in my fucking neighborhood man you know like, <laughs> right, right 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 and then and then he's just like stops and then they're like, yo, man, that guy's fucked up. He's like, fucking blast him, you know? And they fucking shoot him in the chest. And then he just starts walking towards them and they run off. The hell do you want, buddy? Huh? I was just having a drink. You don't need to fuck him. You know you're fucking with him. Huh? Huh? Oh, God. Yo, what the fuck is that guy doing? Hey, homie. Yo, is that motherfucker dragging a cross? Oh, I, hell no. You can't be coming up in here with no cross dragging shit. Yeah, you got that you right. get the fuck up out of yeah, here. You get the fuck out. You listening to me, dog? Light like this bitch up, man. You fuck this motherfucker. Yeah, take that, take that motherfucker. You bitch. Fuck you. Yeah, fuck. What the fuck? Motherfucker ain't going down! Motherfucker's like a Terminator, man! Yo, fuck this shit, man. I'm out, man. Yo, Brody, come on, motherfucker! Maybe he kills one of them? 
Maybe he throws the yeah, cross. Yeah, I was just about to say that. Like, he fucking chucks that fucking cross and maybe like, just nails him to the wall. Ooh, I got it. Like, what if he, when he throws it, he throws it at an angle that it fucking throw it's so heavy that it pushes him into the side of a car and smashes his body in half okay but it but it also grazes one of the other gangbangers who runs off all right do you see what i'm saying like and then maybe the clue can be like the way that the fucking cross smashed into the car like i was saying before it, it leaves some kind of symbol or some kind of mark on the car where he kind of like tell where it came from like oh this is a religious symbol or you know something like that i think it should just be that violent like he just pull like he even walks over to the body that's kind of like smashed dented inside of the car a little bit and just pulls it out you know what i mean pulls the cross out and then just starts dragging it across the street you know or whatever off into the distance and then the other guy's like running and calls the cops or whatever okay and that's when or not the cops but the you know whatever you mm -hmm. know and then the paramedics and everybody show up and they, they do all this stuff maybe it's a mix-up because i'm pretty sure that when like a murder happens they call their special team out you know right it's only the paramedics when someone's hurt so we gotta have somebody that's hurt what do you think maybe it cuts his fucking hand off or something like well that. maybe the guy that that stole the liquor that killed the other homeless person to get this bottle of liquor and like when he swings at him he's so fucking staggeredly drunk that he kind of like misses i thought we had his head explode well yeah 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 but i'm trying to go back to like i'm trying to step back different idea different approach so maybe he's so fucking drunk that he like misses the first swing from this guy it doesn't it just not intentionally it's just that he's so fucking staggeredly drunk that he just kind of misses and then the, maybe then the you know the gang people are hanging i don't out think we alley. should go back over it i think right. we should do something with the gang other gang banger because that's a perfect opportunity to have a paramedic show up right but why would the gang banger be calling the fucking cops maybe maybe he shows up to the fucking hospital to fucking get treated and that's when they find out and call the i don't know but see then then the paramedic guy wouldn't be there right right because everybody's already dead okay so what if the the homeless guy like you were saying maybe he gets fucking just talking shit to the fucking shadowy thing and then he just like kind of slaps him and he fucking slides off into the wall with like a puncture in his stomach and he's not dead. He like, just was like it, as he's tugging shit and he's like taking a swig from the bottle. He gets this, this like bash or, to the fucking face. Or maybe he does get his head pummeled like we said. And then his buddy comes up to him and is like, what the fuck did you do to Charles? What the hell did you do to Charles? You know, and then he just fucking slams him in the stomach. Mm. slamming him into the wall and that's when you know someone in the alleyway sees this happen and then the fucking gangbangers start unloading on him like what are you doing on our street dude you know all that's right. when all that shit happens they they fucking start to run away after shooting him and realizing it does absolutely nothing you know his eyes are kind of glowing a little bit like faintly and then he chucks that fucking axe at one of the running you know gang kids or street kids or whatever you doesn't have to be a gang um and they like fucking it just sticks him inside like in the tail end of a tr like car like the trunk goes bashed in maybe it's like a, his like body a is like half bent in so it like looks like he's folded inside of the inside of the, the side of the car and then he yanks his fucking sword cross out of there yeah maybe it's like a like a like a moving truck almost not like but not you know just for like some business oh yeah there. that'd be cool yeah whatever like he's trying to run across the street and he's like zoop, throws right. it right at him and it sticks and the car overturns a little bit yeah that'd no be no cool. i like that run run man fucking run oh. 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 That'd be cool. Yeah, for sure. So Cliff and Eric show up to the scene or whatever because they see that the, they're trying to help the homeless guy to take him away. And he's like, Pri priest. He's like, don't talk, man. You're like, you know. And maybe he's like sipping on that bottle, the the, the original guy who died. And Eric's like, oh, oh he's just drunk. You know, that trope. Right, right. <laughs> I, I definitely, dude, I don't know why I keep emphasizing on this bottle, but I just want it to be like he's drinking it no matter what, even if it's filled with like his friends' He wouldn't be blood. drinking it if his stomach is punctured, dude. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>
You know what I mean? We're getting too complicated. We don't need to worry about that. We already have the the one homeless guy who's stealing. We'll call him fucking uh, Lock. They call him Locksmith because he fucking breaks into shit and steals for fucking people. Whatever. His name's Locksmith and his buddy or, you know, he goes by Charles, whatever. Charles Locksmith, whatever. Gets his head bashed, drops blood, goes down his arm, drops the bottle. Blood is pouring down him and then he falls over and then his buddy goes up to save him. What did you do to Charles? gets punctured in the stomach and that's why the paramedics are there we're just trying to write off why the paramedics are there that's all right. we're trying to do well i could just see him like holding his stomach and then trying to take the pain away with the bottle that his friend had stole that's filled with his blood and shit but he doesn't give a fuck you think <laughs> yeah yeah no, that, that'd be kind of interesting though i i see what you mean um so what about next so like obviously uh cliff and and eric talk about it on the ride it's like, yo, what the fuck was going on there? And Eric's like, well, it's just another day, you know, in Los Angeles, man. Like, we're just going to fucking, you know, pick up bodies and go home and drink ourselves to sleep. It's just another day. Yeah, but it's not a dumb on the day, obviously, but we'll unfold that later on. It doesn't matter. He's really just the protagonist. It doesn't need to be like a big deal. Maybe he comes across another fucking situation where people are like dying in the situation. And every time he shows up to the scene, people are dying with him and Cliff and Eric. Uh, they show up and they're working the shift. Eric does doesn't really take it seriously because he's desensitized. Cliff does. He cares and he can't save these people. So he's like, it's like getting to him. And like every now and then he's noticing some similarities. So in a way, he's like the forensic guy, like the, you know, the people that basically fucking examine bodies for fucking forensic crimes and shit like that. So they could fucking solve the murderer. Yeah. Uh, but he's like doing that kind of work just because he's a natural at it. And even though he's just a paramedic and has never been able to prove his chops, you know, so maybe like, you know, he goes home that night and it's them drinking. It's kind of like a jovial fun thing. You know, maybe he's like, hey, do you want to go to the strip club? <coughs> and maybe they're drinking the same kind of liquor that, that the guy was drinking. And it just kind of makes him reflect on it. And he's like, God damn, we're even drinking the same fuck. It. He's like, what do you got, man? They go back to he's like, do you want to go to the strip club? He's like, man, I, I'm not doing that again, dude. That's a waste of money. He's like, I don't get that kind of money to fucking do that. He's like, come on, man. I'll get you a lap dance, you know? Like, yeah. uh, and he's like, nah, not my party. Not my party, Eric. You're welcome to go if you want. Nah, man, it's cool. Let's, what do we want to go back to your house, watch some fucking horror movies? What? You know, like he's kind of reserved kind of guy. Yeah. And so he goes back and he's like, what you got? And he's got the alcohol from that that guy and he's like oh man and just kind of makes him reflect on what what happened earlier that yeah night. it's like what the fuck you gotta you got the only alcohol that this fucking guy <laughs> is dying from earlier like wow way to go man he's you want it or not you know what i mean like fucking don't give me no shit eric you fucking piece of shit <laughs> Anyway, maybe uh, he makes a joke like this shit will kill you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this shit will kill you anyway, I guess, man. You know, <laughs> it's funny. Uh, OK, so so they drink. They wake up next day. He's like a late worker. He works at night shift. You know, like he's a paramedic. His shift is at night. Yeah. So he works from like, I don't know, eight till four in the morning. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like maybe maybe like six to eight to four in the morning. Yeah, probably more be like six to four. Yeah. So he works the late night stuff you know uh they always keep them on late make them work extra jobs because they're shorthanded or whatever in this city it doesn't even have to be los angeles it's just a big city let's not even be specific let's yeah. just you know so what happens next so we like we find uh maybe one of the like victims maybe one of the the guys who escaped the fucking priest or whatever is like going to a priest and like talking to him you know about the situation he's like i don't well maybe he's like rethinking like he's like dude my life and like i'm gonna die like and maybe he's like in a confessional booth. right they got tony or they get, they got fucking whatever whoever and maybe he's confessing his sins in a confessional booth maybe he's at home his uh mom is all like you need to go to church you know you guys are dying on the streets now and he's and like maybe... mom you don't understand this this wasn't like a fucking you know a guy like like a, a, that we would meet on the street. This is some fucking crazy tall ass motherfucker, right? You know, with a fucking cross, mom. <laughs> you need to pray to Jesus. That motherfucker prayed to Jesus and killed fucking Tony. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe he's even watching like some kind of televangelist on TV or something, and he's gonna he's calling in to confess his sins and shit. That's funny. I don't know about that. Maybe not that. Like she wants his mom is like into that stuff right 
Maybe it's on in the background then. She's like, you need to go to, you need to go to church, you know, like next Sunday. And he's like, mom, I ain't going to a church ever again after last night. You know, someone just killed someone with a cross. I don't think God's in on the streets these days, <laughs> you know, and he's like the aunt, you know, he doesn't believe. Right. And she's like trying to convince him to like, you know, confess his sins and maybe yeah like well she's just person. old school you know what i mean yeah. like you know he's she's still trying to save him because she's his mom you know and he's he's like kind of a young punk kid and maybe he meets up with fucking cliff at some point in time you know maybe they cross paths at the church or something like that or maybe he's just maybe just at a fucking coffee house or something where he's getting coffee and he's just kind of shooken up and he's all like oh, you look like you've seen some shit and he's like, yeah. just like in passing conversation and he kind somehow of somehow their paths something. need to cross i don't know how right. but but it'd be interesting to have their paths cross it doesn't need to be specific necessarily yeah but, but i think you know at some point they would be crossing she he sh- mom always trying to convince him to go to a priest and then the one time he goes to the priest he gets killed you know <laughs> that kind of thing yeah. you know what i mean like something dark you know and then meanwhile they have the news reports on the tv so the guy wakes up you know, it's like they've been partying while the sun's rising, you know, at four in the morning or whatever. And maybe on this newscast, maybe that's like you kind of hear the burnt in the morning news while he's falling asleep. Right. And kind of describing the killer and what people have said about him. We're talking about Cliff, by the way, guys. Right. Right. And maybe what was the what was the name that we came up for him before? The, the kind of street name for this guy? Oh, fuck. The Saint of Slaughter. Yeah, the Saint of Slaughter. Yeah. So, like, the Saint of Slaughter is struck again and da 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 da, and give yeah. me the details about whatever the, the other killing was. Police are still trying to figure out why these murders are connected, but the same marks are found on each of the bodies with a burn mark. Yeah. Seems like a blunt weapon with a burn mark. If you know any of this, call this number, da 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 da. And then he passes out, goes to the kid, waking or talking to his mom, you know, whatever. And, like, I really feel like that kid would be an interesting kid to dynamic with the emt guy okay maybe maybe the crucifixer goes to kill that kid to clean up his mess right and so the emt shows up and the mother is spouting out all this religious shit yeah yeah, she sees him uh nailed to a wall or some shit you know what i mean (laughs) (laughs) something fucking biblical you know that'd be kind of interesting right okay so what's this kid's name what are we gonna call him it doesn't have to be a typical name like it could be like a nickname well i thought of the other two names can you think of one what do you think spaz spaz maybe like a street name yeah just a street that's what i'm saying nickname yeah that works whatever so Spaz is the one of the kids that escaped the fucking priest, talked to his mom, all that shit. Okay, so next morning, Spaz is, like, hanging out, or next day, because it's nighttime, you know? Like, his mom woke up in the middle of the night when he's running home, because it's, like, you know, early morning. Anyway, he's hanging out with his boys, you know, like, freaked out, because they're like, yo, man, did you hear about Tony? He got crushed in a car, man. Like, yeah, that shit's not real, man. Like, I'm fucking tripped out, man. Like, I don't know what the fuck is going on, but, like, we need to find this motherfucker, dude. And so, like, they have all points bulleted in their their gang or whatever, you know, to fucking catch this guy. And somehow, Tony, you know, is like a a casualty of this. Or maybe he's the hero of the gang. Kind of makes you look at, like, how gangs aren't as bad as we make them out to be, you know, and it's really just about having somebody to to hold your back, you know? Mm-hmm rock your sit yeah like you're protecting the neighborhood kind of thing kind right of like yeah, a biker yeah yeah thing. it could be like a message about that kind of thing you know because everybody looks out for each other um and maybe it's not even really a gang it's just like a group of like kids that like break into cars and dumb shit you know right and they just like maybe some... get money to feed their families or yeah it's whatever. nothing it's nothing nefarious necessarily but they you know they do gary guns um so Spaz is partying with his friends at night under, like, the train tracks or something like that under a bridge or some shit. And they're just, like, you know, they get the barrel and shit, and they're all fucking drinking, smoking pot, doing whatever, you know, young kids do that, you know, just to have some fun and shit like that, you know. Right. And they're talking about Tony and how he got crushed in the car and shit like that. And uh, that's when they see that motherfucker come and maybe show up. What do you think? Like, I keep going. Maybe they're coming after uh spaz now like the 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 crucifier the the crucifixer right maybe he's just like yeah like he feels like he has unfinished business like he got away and that's not gonna happen what if they're like watch. all party and dance and listen to music it's like this loud thing right mm-hmm. and like as they're dancing he's just like dragging the cross behind him walking through the crowd pushing these kids out of the way 
And they're like, yo, motherfucker, what the fuck are they doing? And he's talking about what happened that night to his boys. And then he's like, this this guy's like pushing his way through the crowd, kind of like a badass, like like with a purpose, like he's going to kill. And maybe one guy stands in his way is like, yo, what the fuck are you? Who the, who the fuck are you pushing? And that's when they see him over the shoulders of everybody because he's really tall. Yeah. Like one of their friends is like trying to be a badass in front of this fucking killer priest. And like as he's past him, he kind of like looks over his shoulder and then like you just see his eyes over his collar. Right. Yeah. 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 Him. Like I kind of think that's kind of cool. Oh, yeah. Like and then he's like, oh, fuck, that's the dude. And then the guy's like, yo, what the fuck? And he's like pointing his gun at his face. And then the priest kind of like t- cocks his head. He's like, yo, is that some sort of fucking mask you're wearing? Like, what the fuck are you doing here, boy? <laughs> How does he kill him? He's got to kill that guy. So maybe he, uh, you think he's going to fire at him before? And like maybe the, maybe the bullets go through him or like kind of like, kind of like a crow kind of thing where it like goes through him and he just heals. Like- what? It- I'm thinking, like, he pulls up the cross, does something in front of him, and, like, he's like, what, are you going to bless me, dog? I'm going to fucking blast a cap in your fucking head. And then he shoots him, and then the guy just turns his head and then, like, fucking maybe just pins it into his foot or something like that, like, in a, into the ground or something like that. Wait, what, what if he just, like, okay, so he, like, turns around at the dude, and maybe when he fires, he kind of just moves his head out of the way of the bullet, and then fucking, like you said, stabs his fucking foot with the thing. And this wraps his whole body around the cross and this breaks him. Or he's like, ah, 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 ah. And then he takes his back of his head as he's walking by him and smashes it down on top of the cross, the point at the top. All right. So he like stabs his foot and he just continues to walk and then jams his head down on the top. Yeah, that works. That'd yeah, be like fucking that. badass. And then he just starts walking over to the other guy. You know what I mean? And he's like, yo, dog, yo, dog, we got to get the fuck out of here. He's like, yo, man, he just fucking killed fucking Reggie. Like, we got to get the fuck <laughs> out of here. Uh, and then they kind of scatter. Everybody's scattering and shit. And like they tried. Maybe they surround him at that point in time. So like and maybe he just points at him. Right. And then Tony, or not Tony, uh, Spaz runs off. Now, does he have any ulterior weapons? Like, is it, or is it just the cross? Well, that's why I think it's important that he, that Reggie shoots him in the face and he doesn't, it doesn't affect him because then they realize that shooting him really has no effect. It just slows him. Okay. Does a bullet penetrate him? Does it do any damage? And does it, like I was saying, does it heal afterwards or does he just completely miss him? Maybe when he shoots him in the head and he turns, you hear the fucking the metal fall out of his head and then he jams it down on his foot into the fucking ground, like into the fucking street and fucking he starts screaming. Now, does he leave the cross and the guy? Like, yes, I just, think so. he's still like bleeding on that cross that he left pounded into the ground and he starts walking towards the dude right and then he does like he points at him and then does the fucking the yeah the cross on his chest like yeah up, down, like left right yeah the yeah blessing. the blessing that that they do like and then he points at him like you know what i mean like <laughs> you're fucking next motherfucker and like maybe like some other guys are trying to fight him or whatever like hitting him or something like that and he's well, maybe he pulls out like some kind of kung fu shit with like a rosary you know what i'm saying are you fucking kidding me <laughs> <laughs> oh my god like he's whipping the shit that's around too much patrick that's this isn't fucking oh no 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 that's too much all right I mean, maybe he has rosary beads, but he's not using them as nunchucks. Like, that's too much. Well, I'm saying maybe, like, maybe he, like, wraps some dude, like, around the neck with his rosary, <laughs> right? And then he's just, like, whipping the dude around. Like, cause he's just, like, he's got that fucking demonic strength where he's just, like, fucking... <laughs> And then, like, throws the dude at the other Ooh, guys. Oh, I got it. So when he puts Reggie's head down on the top of the cross after bashing his foot into the ground and just kills him like that, he does the motion of the, like, cross on his chest, but he does it backwards. Because there's a, a way you're supposed right, to do Right, it's supposed it. to be up, down, left, right. right. And so he does it the reverse way, and then when he's done, he points at fucking Spaz. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's, and then maybe some other guys like start to, they're like, they're not sure and they start firing their guns at him, but he just kind of looks at him and it's just like, I don't know, it's just kind of scary. And his eyes glow as he's pointing at him. So like he knows he can't get away. So like, but there's got to be a guy that gets hurt in the process so that the EMT and him sort of got kind of like get to know each other or something like that. Something, you know, like, how do we do that? 
does the EMT even show up to this one or just see a news report on it? Right. Maybe maybe he escapes again after that. Right. So. And then he follows Skaz. Uh, keep calling him Skaz. Spaz. S- he follows Spaz to his house again. And that's when they find him like pinned to the wall, you know. But the EMT and Spaz haven't met yet. Like, what would be that? Yeah, there's gotta, there's gotta be a moment where he does get pinned to the wall, though. Well, no, for sure. Yeah, I mean, it's a crucifixer. You gotta crucify somebody. Maybe, maybe, maybe the Cliff and Eric are handling another fucking case down the street for a shooting, and they're bringing somebody in, trying to bring back somebody back to life. And he trips. Well, maybe he trips over the legs of the guy who he's trying to bring back to life. He's like, "Yo, kid, what the fuck? Watch what you're doing." Three, four five you know like that kind of shit yeah what do you think so he was running away from what had just happened and then right alley. from a, for a while right he's he's gone like blocks to get away from this guy to go back to his house like almost to the point where he doesn't even know where he's shown up at like he has no idea where he's gone and he trips over the legs and that's kind of how they meet he's like kid yo kid are you okay like is everything all right like what's what's going on do you need me to call the police yeah and he's just frazzled and so they meet again some other time, but that's how they first introduce. Next day. So next day. Uh, like now he's hunting down all of the gang members. Okay. See what I'm saying? Like, because they've been trying to kill him. Like they, they shot at him and he's killing them and he's just killing anybody that tried to like get involved in his business. We don't know why. We don't know what his business is. Just is. Maybe there's deaths on the news that happen that we don't even see. Mm -hmm. Or maybe we get flashes of scenes like what would be a good scene where somebody is like he maybe he pulls literally the blood of his hit the flesh of himself off. Or maybe it ends up being spaz where he make feeds him his own flesh (laughs) as he's nailed to the wall. Yeah, that could work. You know, definitely. Do you know what I mean? Like we got to do stuff like that in there. But I don't know how. Like, I think it'd be interesting, though, like that this now there's some sort of vendetta where he's like going after all the people who know about his existence in some way. Pretty much anybody that's seen him. Right. Okay. But maybe maybe some of the guys that are in the gang got hurt by him, like because he's like fighting them a little bit. Yeah. And they get away. And that's why they're trying to resuscitate one of the guys down the street because he ran, but he like was in such pain that he passed out and was dying. So they tried to bring him back to life because his heart stopped. Yeah. 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 And then he's like, oh, my God, fucking it, it, maybe it was the guy he was talking to who tried to get like s- back him up when when he points at him because he's like the big boss, man. So mm-hmm. he th- he's got to like stand up to him and maybe he fucking like fucking crushes his arm or something like that or punches him and then crushes his arm or kicks his leg or. I don't know. Somebody, one of the gang members is like down the street. He yeah, trips over his trips legs. Over him. And that's when the conversation starts with Maybe he gets Cliff like, maybe like there's no saving this guy. Right. Right. And, and when he's like, he you know something about dude, this kid? When he tripped over the dude, maybe he got knocked unconscious. So he's in back of the fucking EMT as they're driving him somewhere. Maybe right. to the hospital. Well, maybe, maybe he's like, hey, do you, you, you doing all right, kid? You know something about this? Because he looks shocked and then he passes out. Okay. Like something like that. And that's how Cliff and him get in to know each other. And he's like, you know, he's like, look, man, I can't, I, I, I can't go to the hospital. I, I'm yeah, all right. Maybe he wakes up and he's like, Cliff's like, rough night. He's, he's like, like, you don't know. He's like, well, I know a thing or two about rough nights. Yeah. He's like, you know what I have to do every day? I got to pick up fucking you. Yeah. Up every night off the streets. I'm out here fucking picking kids like you mm-hmm. up all the fucking time. And I, I don't like it, man. And he's like, he's like, you, you don't understand, dude. He's like, I can't, I can't go, I can't go to the hospital. I can't go, I can't go. He's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Before you go jumping out of the fucking police, he's like, Eric, can you fucking stop the goddamn truck, you know, the, the car vehicle? And he's like, yo, he's like, what's up, man? And he's like, and he tells him a story about this priest going around killing people. And he's like, he's like, are you on drugs? Mm. You know, that kind of thing. And then he's like, no, man, I'm not on fucking drugs. Why does nobody listen to me? And like, uh, Maybe while they're driving or where they're stopped and maybe the crucifix. Right. They see him. And then Eric's like talk like up front seeing this guy. He's like, what the get the fuck out of the way? He's they like, Cliff, there's a him. guy dragging a fucking cross up here. You know, like maybe funny. they don't even see him. And maybe they're just like in the back talking and then they hear that shit. Right. So they hear this shit coming towards it. And all of a sudden he just fucking rips the doors off the back of the fucking ambulance and then fucking swings it into the bed that that spaz is laying on and rips him out of the fucking the fucking ambulance in mid conversation pulls the cut while the cart goes rolling down the street with him in it or something like that but but you know what would be interesting though is if eric gets killed there because then it invests 
cliff into the story. Okay. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, I think it'd be interesting if he was like, hey, Eric, can you can you pull over here or something like that? And then he sees Eric's just like kind of talking on his phone to some girl like, bitch, what the fuck? You know, like, you stupid fuck. What are you? Right. You know, like whatever funny little clever, like, Eric thing that there is, like a little stupid thing. And he sees this guy walking toward him. He's like, what the fuck? You know, like you see, and he keeps coming. He's like, whatever, man. Fucking Los Angeles. You know, like <laughs> fucking, he's like, ain't none of my business. I ain't going to fucking mess around with it. He's like, yo, uh, hey, Cliff, hurry up, man. There's some fucking weird shit out of here. He's like, look, we're having a fucking conversation, you know, like talking. And, uh, and then all of a sudden you, Eric gets out of the car and it has a confrontation with this guy in the fucking, do you see what I mean? Some sort of thing. And that kind of like spirals the whole story out of control. Okay. Does that make sense? What no, do you, it does. Do you think? I mean, that that's good or no? No. If, if you want Eric to have the conversation first with it, I mean, that that'll work. I don't know. I just think it'd be interesting, like to see this funny guy. You know, uh, maybe he even gets away and tries to hit him with the car or something like that, and they run over his arm or something. <laughs> Fuck you! You ain't gonna be carrying that shit no more. I don't know. I think it'd be interesting if he sees him come up and then he just stands in front of the fucking ambulance. Like right. he, like he's got the patient of a thousand fucking. Now you the know. question is 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 are they gonna know that Eric got killed or is that gonna be like? Yeah, no, no. I think it should happen. Like, like they kind of don't know, but then they hear him scream and like you know he tries to get out and maybe that guy swings his fucking cross thing and and like chops his fucking head off through the front of the car or something like that. Okay. And they have to it tumbles out his body and then they the two of those the cliff and Spaz go driving off to try to save their own life because they see this fucking the strength of this fucking beast you know what i mean right like i feel like uh, you know but it's got to be the funny moment with like cliff and it and that thing you know he's trying to be fun with him at first right you know but then like like he just keeps standing there and cliff's like hey man i'm trying to be nice or not cliff eric i'm trying to be nice here and then maybe they have to like you know push his headless body out of the fucking the ambulance and take right. off all right, man, I'm pulling over. Oh, shit, who the fuck is this? Yeah, what's up? Yeah. Yeah, about that. Yeah, I'm down, girl. Uh, I don't know. Maybe like, wait, hold on, girl. Uh, let me let me call you right back. Okay. Hey, yo, what the fuck are you doing? Hey, get out of the road. Motherfucker's driving a fucking dragon. A, is that a fucking cross? <laughs> the fuck is this guy? Hey, man, look, been a long night. We all need to go home. If you ain't got no place to go, maybe head on down to the church. I don't know. I mean, shit, you got the cross. <laughs> uh, but for real, though, man, are you, you, you doing all right over there? Listen, man, you ain't saying shit to me. Try to be nice. And all you doing is just staring at me. You want to play like that? Mama, call the cops. Call them right now. Better get your move on. Jesus Christ, look at you. Hey, Eric, where are you at, buddy? Hey. Holy shit, what the fuck? Yo, dude, that's the motherfucker. We gotta get the fuck out! What the fuck is that? They like drive over his legs or some shit. 
<laughs> maybe actually pull the fucking cross out of the ambulance. It's just like embedded in the. Well, wall I think it like him. it almost like crushes in the front. Okay, and like chops in his head, or it comes in from the side and comes out the front. So it kind of like you see the metal bent and shit, and the glass is all shattered and shit. And they obviously hear that, you know, they're like, "What? Shut! What the fuck is going on?" And like he's trying to convince, like Cliff's trying to convince Spaz not to fucking just run off and like let them like help him or something like that. And that's and he's talking about the priest, and that's when all this shit happens. And it's like now you have to believe because there he is, you know, yeah. kind of situation. So then they drive off, and it's like this fucking. Like, maybe he even hits the back of the fucking ambulance for another swing, you know? And he was like, what the fuck? He's like, I've been telling you, man, a fucking priest. <laughs> He's like, his eyes were all glowing and shit. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's kind of interesting. So then what? So I'm, I'm thinking there has to be something that connects them to kind of like understand who the the antagonist is. You know what I mean? Who they they figure out who the killer is. By something that happened recently in the news. Maybe it's his mom again. Maybe she knows she knows the story of this priest that killed his son. Okay. And disappeared. Well, maybe like it's the church that she's like a a part of the congregation or whatever, and that the priest that she knows and goes to, she understands what happened to him. Or uh, I think it, I, I don't think we really need to express it. Like that's like something you do in a sequel. Like really, you just want the the vibe to happen in okay. the first one. If you start explaining things, in my opinion, in horror movies, you've lost the listen. You've lost the viewer. Like it's something that's like, well, where do we take this now? That when you start getting into details, for me personally, I think it's for a sequel. Okay. Because they didn't really express what Jeepers Creepers was. You know what I mean? Not even in you know they they kind of do, but Jeepers Creepers. <laughs> I don't know. What do you think? I mean, I, I, I mean, I'll add it in there if you want, but I, I really think we should just keep it simple. Yeah, keep it simple. But like, is it just going to be like a thing where they just they never find out any kind of like tidbits about the killer and just kind of like have to deal with like onslaught after onslaught? Yeah. And then by the end, it'll be maybe Spaz nailed to the fucking wall, eating his own flesh. And like somehow like he disappears and it's just a bad ending kind of thing. Mm. You know? Okay. And then, like, Cliff is just like, what the fuck? You know? Like, he goes there to help him. And as he as Spaz is dying, he's like, you know, he tells them something or whatever. His eyes are ripped out. He's nailed to the wall. He's been eating his own flesh. You know? I'm ready now. I'm ready now, man. <laughs> Cliff, is that you? Gives him a quick blowjob. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Kidding. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Where, where do you want to go with it? It doesn't have to be, like, they defeat the beast. You know, it could be just like, you know, they like somehow get a leg up on him and he disappears. Okay. But uh, like he takes a casualty with him and I think Spaz would be the perfect casualty. Okay. But everywhere in between is like murder and mayhem. They go to a, they go, they try to escape. Uh, maybe the fucking, the ambulance breaks down. Like he, he like somehow hit the tire and it popped. And then they go into a, a fucking strip club and it's kind of a joke there. He's like, God, Eric would have would loved this part. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> like Eric would have loved these titties. Yeah. He's like, he's like, it's so fucking ironic. We're at a fucking strip club right now after fucking <laughs> Eric is dead, you know, kind of thing, you know? Yeah. He didn't even need to express it. He like, he didn't even need to say it, but they go to a strip club to fucking try to call the police or something like, and then they cause a panic and then he, and he's in there fucking killing strippers. Right. One of them swinging and she's doing this fucking move with her legs where she's spinning around and here comes Starlight. <laughs> and then he's like, Woom! And you see her fucking body go off into the wall into a mirror and stick in halfway, <laughs> you know, as he's like grabbing fucking the bouncer and just snapping his neck. All right, guys, give it up for Starlight! What the fuck is that? <laughs> Holy shit, what the fuck? Or maybe he, like, as he's like, swings at that, the stripper, he, like, breaks the pole, right? And then, like, like oh, she's yeah. stuck to the wall with his fucking, with his fucking axe is all, like, you know, this impaled her to the wall in the mirror or whatever. And, and one he of just the takes that pole and fucking completely runs the fucking bouncer through with it. Right. That'd be cool. Maybe fucking spears him in the chest with it and sticks right. him to the front door or something like that, <laughs> where people are trying to get out and they can't or something. <laughs> Or maybe it's, and, but, but he you just have, takes the two 
two halves of the pole and kind of crucifies them. Like he throws one into one arm and then one in the other kind of thing. But it, but the bouncer would have to die first, almost, I would think, because they wouldn't just let some dude like that come in the front door, right? Like he didn't come to the front door. Maybe he came through the, the back door where the dressing rooms are for all the strippers. Well, maybe Spaz goes to that strip club, too. And he's like, he's like, hey, man, we got to fucking call the cops, man. Like we got to he's like, what are you? You ain't bringing that shit to my fucking business. You know, we ain't bringing that shit here. He's like, man, it's a fucking emergency. Like we we, we really need to, you know, like and uh, they go there and then like Spaz is like, I need to drink, man. You want to drink? And he's like, no, I don't want to fucking drink. I'm fucking working. You know, like he's like, I think work is over for tonight. You know, or maybe he doesn't even know that he orders a drink, and he just automatically just gives him a shot that he had ordered. Right, and he's just like order. Well, I don't know. I just think it'd be funny just to add like a little part where they're drinking, and, and maybe then, it's like an ongoing trope with the liquor from the the bum at the beginning. Somehow their phones don't work, guys. We understand that there's cell phones now, and that's like the biggest fucking shitty trope now. It's like, how do you get rid of cell phones when murder and everything is happening like that? You know? <laughs> You're right. Um, but, put this shit on Instagram. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe like he dropped his phone, like Spaz dropped his phone or whatever, and then when they try to like, he can't find his phone or it's dead, whatever we need to do to just get them to get to a pay phone inside of the strip club. Okay, you guys good now? All right, we're good. We're caught up. Uh, but anyway, I think it'd be funny. Like, yeah, like so like the bouncer guy is there. Maybe there's like another bouncer guy in the back and there's one in the front. He kills the one in the front. How does he kill him? I would I, dude, I like it when like like that scene in like the banana splits from last week where he, the guy fucking shoved that lollipop down his throat. Maybe that's something like that. And it just goes completely through his body from the mouth. Oh, Maybe we could do that to the guy in the back. I like that too. Maybe he does it with the, the stripper pole. Yeah. Okay. But, but what if the guy in the front is talking shit to him? He's like, you think you're getting in here, big man? He's like, I know this ain't my fucking first rodeo, you know? And then the fucking priest like shows him the cross. He's like, this ain't no place for no priest either, you know? And then <laughs> the priest grabs him by the throat and chucks him out in the street and he gets hit by a fucking truck. Oh, it's like fucking run over kind of yeah. shit, you know, this, like like spontaneous explosion, just yeah. fucking juice everywhere. That's fine with me. I love those. I always had those in those in these lately. <laughs> <laughs> just juice. And that's when you don't realize like he's already snuck into the club and like you see a patron like he's like some jolly fucking asshole with his fucking twenty dollar bill getting ready to tip the fucking chick who's like doing this amazing trick around the bowl. He's all smiling and you see the shadow guy coming up behind him and then uh she's spinning around and you just see blood splat on his face as it goes her body goes past him into the fucking mirror wall you know <laughs> a second note on the what happens to the guy in the front door who's managing the line or whatever the front door guy maybe after he throws him into the truck it splatters on everybody who's waiting in line like all over their faces like and they all run dead ish you know what i mean like so much just gallons of blood to splash onto him and they just run, right? They just yeah. run off. <laughs> and then he continues his way into the club. Right. And then it goes to the scene of them drinking and then, like, the, the, the stripper and then her right. fucking getting impaled into the wall. Right. Well, she, he hits her with it. He doesn't, like, let go of the... the uh, right. It, yeah. just, it just sends her flying into right, the wall. Right, yeah. And, like... <laughs> Maybe the guy that's like the jolly asshole who's got the twenty dollar bill is there with his buddy, and his buddy gets fucking hit by the fucking body as it goes sending off. <laughs> you know, and he's just like maybe like tits first or something. Yeah, and he's like Pete, <laughs> Pete, <laughs> and he's just like his whole life is destroyed. But this <laughs> it's this kind of comical moment, you know? What right. I mean? Like tries to hand the twenty to the fucking to the priest and he just smashes it into his chest or something like that like it's mayhem you know what i mean like right. he's sitting in the chair and he's like 20 <laughs> maybe he makes a joke about some kind of coll you, you, oh you got a collection plate or something <laughs> fucking rap music or some shit playing in the background like oh pop that pussy oh <laughs> pussy pussy you know <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so then like the 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 Spaz and fucking Cliff are at the bar trying to make a phone call. They call the cops. Everything's fine. They're on their way or whatever. And then they're like, "Oh my god!" And he's like, "They're fucking here." And then fucking Spaz takes his shot and fucking like 
the bartender's got a shotgun, you know, behind the thing. And he's all like, fuck, you, this ain't happening here. You know, and he's like pumping rounds into the fucking priest. And then like um, his eyes glow. And then like, I don't know what would happen to the bartender as the Spaz and Cliff try to escape. I would say like, let's go to what we were saying before. Maybe he uh, he takes that shotgun from him and is straight down the windpipe with it. Maybe he lets off the last couple rounds that are left in the shotgun into his body as it's shoved down his throat, blows his entrails out of his fucking ass. Mmm, I mean, I like that idea. Ooh, maybe he jams it down his throat. Right. Flips him on the stage so his legs are facing away from him and his head's on the stage and then he pulls the trigger on the stage and then he does the blessing upside down blessing <laughs> right. you know as he's walking out the door and maybe maybe there's just like some girl who's like in the corner shaking like i'm, I'm, I'm sorry god like you know like <laughs> you know and then it cuts to like cliff and fucking spaz like running off okay um so where do they go now well do they do they need to try to like combat against this guy like do they need to get weapons and stuff like that like does there need to be a montage where they're like gearing up maybe maybe and maybe they're using stuff that was a uh, kind of like an evil dead scene where they're like building shit kind of thing but there's got to be a, a sign that like prevents them that they 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 catch on to early on well he's a priest right so maybe maybe I ain't no priest I've ever seen kid you know all right like but but how do they stop it like how do they slow him down like what would be maybe they figure out that like holy water has some kind of effect on him that's what i was thinking too maybe if they go to a church and he can get in the church but the holy water still kind of hurts him yeah it doesn't kill him maybe yeah maybe so they're running through a church or something just happenstance when they're when they're running out of the strip club and shit and maybe somehow they're like they try to cut through a church to get away from him and like they notice that he like maybe bumps into like the holy water okay i kind of know that it, it kind of like bothered him a little bit or hurt him Mm-hmm. okay it has some effect on him and maybe they like go to the gun store afterwards and like figure out a way to put it on the bullets or maybe the next closest place to the strip club is the church you know right down the street i've seen it i've fucking seen this before <laughs> I, I swear to god i've seen this before so maybe maybe he runs down to they run down to the uh church and they bang on the door or something like that to get help you know they're like fuck I mean, there's like murders happening down the street and maybe there's some other street kids on the on the way that this and maybe they don't even realize it's a fucking church and then when they do they're like are you fucking kidding me right yeah that would be kind of <laughs> interesting but not too oh, tongue-in-cheek but but yeah no no okay so but but on the way there uh they pass some kids who give them a uh, a bunch of shit and uh like try to like try to rob them or something they're like are you fucking serious right now yeah like there's a fucking murderer on the way here yeah right heard that one before homie you know what i mean like like what the fuck give me your wallet yeah give me your fucking wallet and they're like fine fucking take the wallet can we go now are you done you know you got a real fucking attitude but the uh, this 200 dollars kind of cools me <laughs> out you know <laughs> right <laughs> And then they get killed by the fucking priest on the way to the church. They're just like, yeah, what the fuck ever? And they kind of like push past him. Right. And I think this would be a great moment. I've got this whole scene pic pictured out. So just hear me out. On all this, right. Okay. Let's hear it. It's just coming to me like now all of a sudden, like, let's just do this first. How do we kill those guys? The dickheads that stole the money from them, robbed them. Maybe you don't even really see it. Maybe like as they're running away, like wherever it is, there's like lots of people on the street, right? So maybe you just see, like, two pops of blood. Like, they turn back and they hear, like, what the fuck? And they, like, turn back and they just see, like, this two little fucking just splashes of blood just come up. And maybe, What if like, one of the guys runs past them as they're on their way to the church? Oh, like, <laughs> right? And he starts running with them? Yeah. Kind of even past them because yeah, they're so like, freaked hey, out? They, they start running because they think he's coming after them. And they're like, and then he runs past them. And they're like, yo, yo, we, we already gave you money. <laughs> you know, and he's like, fuck you, man. There's fucking, there's a fucking murderer. And then they like, they all run to the church. And then they're like all the way in the back by the front. You know, the front of the church where the like sermons the pedestals happen. Pedestals at right. and all that shit. And then and, and the priest there is like, you know Or podium, sorry. There podium. shall be no evil that will enter this building and you think, Oh, finally. Like know? it's like a Gandalf, but none shall pass. That <laughs> priest is just like smashed down. And he was like and he and he does some like Christian ritual, you know, like thing. He was like, The power of the Lord, you know, blah 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 blah. And he holds up his cross, his little cross, and then the fucking the thing walks up to him as he's dragging like the 
the the evil priest, the crucifixer, comes up to the priest as he's dragging it across the floor. And then the priest holds it up to him. He was like, I will not stand in the presence of evil. You do not belong here. And he just holds up the other cross like the crucifixer holds up his cross. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Like, that's not a knife. Yeah. This a knife. All right. So now it's turning stupid, but I can't help it. Like, because we're just. Like, you got to have, like, with with a movie like The Crucifixer, you got to have at least one or two of those moments in there where it's just kind of like a nod. Oh, that's funny, dude. Like, like mine's bigger than yours. Yeah. (laughs) And then maybe as he's like, he cuts him or whatever, like, then you get to see the whole effect on the holy water. Maybe he knocks over the holy water and maybe some splashes on the crucifixer and they kind of see that and realize oh, oh that's a weakness you know oh I mean? maybe the priest goes up to the door because like for a second the priest or the he sees like he's like what's going on what's happening outside my sons you know like and the one guy's got blood all over him who whose friends like who robbed them got murdered and, he, and they're all in there like kind of like what the fuck and he was like, I fucking told you, man, you, you fucking deserve that shit for stealing this shit from me, you know? And uh, so then the priest is like, what's going on? And he goes to shut the door and he opens it to look outside. And that's when he sees the, the, the crucifixer dragging the cross and he locks the door. But the crucifixer like breaks through the door like some fucking shining type shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know right, what I right. mean? And like, so he breaks through the door and that's when he does the whole spiel. Like, you will not pass. Da 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 da. And then the fucking, how does he, ca- how would he hurt the, the priest enough to knock him into the fucking holy water to like spill it on him somehow? We kind of want him to be alive, but not like maybe cut off his arm. Maybe he has like a, so maybe he cuts off his arm, right? With the crucifix in his hand. And like the crucifix falls out of his dead hand. Ooh, what if what if, into the holy water and splashes up on him? What if he has like a like a another little tiny crucifix on the side? The the crucifixer, yeah, he has like a little like tiny knife. So he shows him his knife and cuts off his arm with the the left hand. Okay, do you know what I mean? Like he holds up the cross and then slices up, and then the priest is like, "Oh my god!" and falls back into the into the holy water as it's spraying blood everywhere. You know. And then um, he, like, takes his hand, the other hand, and then sprays it on him, you know, like, back, you know, evil spirit. Like, the, into the holy water? Right. And that's how you know he burns. He's like, ah! Like, right. Whatever. Some fucking Frankenstein fucking noise. <laughs> Fire! <laughs> yeah. priest. Fire bad. Bad priest no like. <laughs> <laughs> There shall be no evil in here. Oh, shit, man. He got in. This guy's unstoppable, man. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the righteous path for the name's sake. Even though I walk in the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. And they're kind of, and like the other two are like at the front, you know. The, no, they ran to the front. Yeah, cause. yeah, yeah, yeah. They're they're already by the podium and shit, and they kind of like look back, like, dude, that's a bad idea. Don't open that fucking door, dude. But there's got to be some other holy water somewhere else. And he was like, oh, he finds a jug of holy water or something. <laughs> well, maybe like you know, a lot of fucking churches now have fucking gift shops and stuff, and maybe they just grab like a shit ton of it. They have gift shops though, dude. They do. Like, well, they're not. They got bookstores. They got bookstores. <laughs> Okay. Well, but, I mean, yeah. I've seen that. 
But I didn't know about no fucking gift shop. <laughs> they don't. They call them bookstores, but they have other trinkets in there, like stuffed animals and like holy water. Well, maybe they're just throwing stuff off, like around the front of the church, at him to try to stop him. Okay. And maybe they try to like burn him or something, but it doesn't really work. So then they escape out the back, and somehow they get separated. Maybe they go back to you know Cliff's house together anyway for something to like find you know like maybe he's like, like i live in a building where they got fucking security up the wazoo and all this other shit i know he's a fucking beast but i don't think he could get through all these you know all this stuff you're like you know we gotta I, we gotta get some sleep in or maybe like he knows that like his mom is like a religious freak and knows that she has holy water in the house kind of thing i mean but my thought is is that here's here's what i think like the reason i'm i'm saying go to cliff's house first is because then they split up and go to each other's house when nothing happens during the day. Okay. But then that night is when Spaz is, like, protecting himself with wa- holy water, whatever his mom does, but it doesn't affect him, or he gets through him, and that's when you see Spaz get stuck to the wall and, and, and speared in the side like Jesus, and, like, pieces of his flesh fed to himself. He's like, and now we will have our sermon, you know, like, we will break bread. You know, whatever flesh the, of my flesh. Yeah, whatever the fuck he does, you know, and then he feeds it to him yeah. and his mother and and the, the priest. They all take it and they drink his blood and like his mom's like freaking out, but she doesn't die somehow. She's like he's like almost forcing her right. to drink like this goblet of blood. And like the dog's like licking his organs on the couch in front of the, the fucking like he's pinned the fucking behind the couch. And they're taking communion from his body, like, in front of the TV. Well, what was it that they, like, I hate to go into, well, what did they do to Christ when they had, they, they like, stabbed him with spears, That's what I'm right? saying. They do, they show, we'll show all of that, um, but Cliff won't know. Yeah. And then, so. Like, when, he's just walking into this event. Right. So he shows up, but maybe, maybe it's better that we don't show that until after Cliff shows up, and then it's like a flashback in the mother's eyes. And then it comes and it zooms back from her face and she's like, you know, yeah, maybe we don't even see everything that happens, but we see flashes of it in her mind. He's okay. like, are you OK? And he finds the body like up on the wall and then, like the dog's eating some of his organs, like licking it for whatever reason. It's like this dark, fucked up right. lights are flickering and like, I don't know, like, but she's still alive. And uh, that's what you see. And she's like, father. Father Thomas. And that's the end of the movie. So it kind of leaves it open a little bit. Yeah. And so, like, the next movie, we get to go deeper into. Right. Who Father Thomas is. Yeah. And, like, and how he becomes a sleuth and, like, he's like, now he's like a hunter. So he kind of has an idea what hurts this guy. Right. And maybe at the end of the movie, you would show it after the credits him gearing up. Oh, yeah. I love that. You know what I mean? Classic Evil Dead scene where it's like, ka chink, ka chunk. (laughs) Building shit. Yeah, something like that. You yeah. know what I mean? What do you think? Oh, I like it. Yeah. Yeah, I want to we should it, make this movie. It got a little silly, but I think we, you know, like with if we were to actually spend the weeks that it takes to write a story and actually like flesh everything out and like uh, dude, I think go they're... through several rough drafts and things like that and see what works and what doesn't, you know, cuz stuff's going to be dropped or not. If we were to make a movie, we would flesh all that out. Yeah. Like no pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> But what, but long winded as it may, and probably a nightmare to fucking edit because we we were all over the joint. We derailed a few times and everything like that. But uh, I hope I condensed it down for you guys to kind of make sense of the process of coming up with a story. We never say that our stories are going to be the best in the world, but I like them. Patrick likes them. Yeah. And that's all that fucking matters, all right? Fuck right. you guys. What do you guys think? Do you <laughs> like this idea of the of of crucifixer uh, or the crucifixer? What do you think we should call it? The crucifixer or crucifixer? Well, the crucifixer definitely takes me back to like like nostalgic like eighties kind of like titles. You know what I mean? Like the like the crucifixer. Yeah, I mean it definitely does, but like crucifixer seems a little bit more poignant. But like, uh, oh yeah, for sure, it it matters with how you want it to roll. See, but what would the tagline be for the crucifixer or crucifixer uh, B? What are you doing? I was looking for a tagline. Like I'm trying to oh. grab stuff. Oh, we just us come up with it. Don't look for one. There's no just for inspiration. I was just trying to think of something biblical. That would fit in, and maybe we can, you know, rearrange it to... Thou shall not live. Oh, you did it. (laughs) 
<laughs> you fucking did it, dude. <laughs> yeah. That was pretty good, that, right? That's it, dude. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> You're all looking it up and yeah, shit. I'm like, like well, that's and it's like it's so it's one of those things. It's like why the fuck did I even think of that? But you know, if it wasn't for you going, oh, I need to look up, you know, some biblical shit, and I'm like, thou shall not live. I love it. I yeah. do. Yeah, that's great. Perfect tagline. Crucifix the crucifixer. Thou shall not live. <laughs> it's so good, dude. <laughs> it is like fucking watertight. That's pretty good, yeah. yeah. I, I think that's perfect. I don't think there's anything else we need to do. No. What do you guys think? Uh, are we geniuses or no? Is this, <laughs> is this, a, is this a, a good movie that you would watch? Because I would watch the shit out of this. Oh, dude. And I and uh, we, 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 uh, we actually own the copyright to this, so you can't steal it. And if you do, why don't you just hire us anyway? Because we're going to do a 10 times better job of fucking conceptually putting it together. I am all about the and, details. And like watertighting that fucking like, script or whatever. You know, we can work together. We can make this thing happened all right guys so just let us know sound off of the comments below <laughs> send us an email we'll, we'll, we'll gladly accept any checks or uh money cashier <laughs> cashier's <laughs> checks whatever yeah you got food stamps yeah we don't take uh personal checks though so <laughs> Shit, i'll take food stamps i'll take whatever you can throw them away. <laughs> fuck that anyway guys so what did you think of this movie that we came up with what are some of the things that you liked maybe didn't like what would have added um you know hindsight 2020 there's always a million different things i would think of after we're doing it but while we're in the heat of the moment making the creativity we're never going to come up with every single angle because our mind is just like i said it's a wave you're right. gonna you just ride that wave until it fucking breaks and uh, i think we found the right breaking point uh, I think it's it's cozy enough, big enough to be a first movie without answering too many questions, without going too far. Uh, I think I think it's a good thing. What do you think, Patrick? I, I like it, and you know what? I I think we should work further on this movie and actually maybe start writing a script about it because, <laughs> dude, like it, it just. It just it, it just right up our alley. It just seems like it'd be a really fun film. But yeah, if you guys want to be a part of this and you want to add your fake name to the the thing, it's a lot. There's a lot in there. There's at least thirty or forty in there. I think I don't know. It's a lot. And if you want to add some of yours in there, and uh, maybe we'll pick it out, call your name out, give you a shout out on the podcast. Make sure you include your name and everything like that to the contact section of our website. You can go to longlivethevoid.com. Maybe we'll pick yours, give you a shout out, all that. It's pretty cool. You know, it's just part of like working, like doing this thing together, guys, like having the listeners and the, our friends and people be involved in the creative process. We love it. So, but uh, we hope you enjoyed it. And of course, next week we'll be doing it. Chapter two. We'll be floating on down to the movie theater. <laughs> you like popcorn? <laughs> if you guys have not listened to the It Chapter One uh, episode that we did, uh, I did a like a little skit intro where I punch a punch it Pennywise in the face, you know, and it's it's kind of like my own version, but I maybe we'll try something for next week too. I don't know. We'll see. You guys should really check that out, but. Yeah, we'll be back next week with a brand new episode. And as always, long live the void.